Well, welcome. Um, I am excited to share today. Kevin will drive some slides. I'm a visual person, so, um, so we'll have some fun visuals on the screen. And I really do start with a thank you. I, I believe, you know, we have time, right? And really, it's one of the best gifts we can give to each other is our time. And we're doing that today, so I, I don't take that for granted. It's appreciated. And good to see some folks I, I know. And, and so what I'm going to talk about, I'm currently at Office Pride, and you'll hear plenty about that. But before Office Pride, I really had a pretty wild story that I think the Lord wrote, and I just happened to participate. But the theme of it is the faith lessons I learned from $3 billion in business transactions. And just to lay some context, this is over about a six-year period recently. So I've been at Office Pride the last year or so. The six years before that is, is this journey. And, um, and I'm convinced that it might even be a Harvard Business Review one day, the whole story of ministry brands. But um, I'll also start with a little disclaimer. I, it is a little weird and uncomfortable to talk about myself this much and the journey. But, um, and I saw Joanne Davis is here. One of the things that kind of kicked me over the edge was I'm in C12. Joanne's a, a C12 chair, and I'm, I'm a big fan of C12. Charles is in C12 as well. I know there's a few of us here. And one of the biggest benefits I get out of C12 is actually hearing the stories of the people in the room and how they navigated, how they approached something, how they prayed for wisdom. And, and so many times I'm able to be in a moment where I've heard a story of how they navigated it and it helped me. So my hope is I'll share my story. Uh, I hope it resonates with you as we live out our faith in the workplace. Just like in C12, I do believe that the marketplace is a platform for ministry and we should be super intentional about it. And the opportunities we have for impact in the marketplace are, are probably greater than any other opportunities we have, if you really think about it. And so that's my hope and, and that's what I'm gonna cover. So um, a lot of you probably do know Todd Hopkins. So up there in the top picture there, Office Pride has been around for over 30 years. We are based out of Palm Harbor, but we have offices and owners throughout the country in about 30 states. And so we are in a fun growth path right now. After 30 years, Todd brought me on with, with some additional private equity investment. And I will, I will say that too, you know, as some of you all have your businesses and you've maybe interacted with private equity or you've wondered if that's a, a path for you at some point, in my experience, I would actually say private equity has actually been a really good thing. I think some folks have heard the stories that are, are not as great, but I will tell you, and even right now with Office Pride, we have a partner in Trivest, and we have great partners on the private equity side. They are the fuel to the things we want to accomplish, right? And so just an encouragement if you're ever exploring that. And so let's jump to the next slide. So th real quick, though, that was Todd handing off the, the baton to me. It was actually a coffee cup as, as we... Uh, made this transition about a year ago, but before then, uh, so Protect My Ministry is the company I came from, and this is back in 2015. And out of nowhere, this company ministry, or uh, yeah, ministry brands came knocking, and they were looking to acquire the company. And I never heard of them. They were actually pretty stealth about it, but if you all go to a church, I assume some of us here go to church. Is that fair? Uh, and ministry brands doesn't go to market that way, but I can almost guarantee you, you have used their stuff. And so when you go to check in your kiddo and you get a little sticker, that's called check-in. That was probably ministry brands or, or another competitor. So Fellowship One is that company. When you give online or give on your phone, ministry brands was actually the biggest company in the world for online and church giving through app, through online recurring gift, they had acquired multiple companies. We'd done about 40 acquisitions, and they acquired Easy Ties, Simple Give, Kindred, a lot of others. But again, that technology was ministry brands. If you volunteered somewhere, like in a kids' ministry, and you did a background check, that was probably Protect My Ministry, which really for the last 15 years has been the biggest church background check company in the U.S. Right now, this group is doing about 15,000 background checks a day. And for those, uh, I went to Idlewild with the funny story there is that company started out of Idlewild when two guys were dropping their kids off and said, who's background checking our kids, right? That's how that company started back in 2005. And so the ministry brands deal happened. I had some background in, in acquisitions, and so I helped do it. And then I met with the founder of ministry brands. And this is actually a note from my journal. And I was like in the, I was so excited. I was like a kid in a candy store because I'm thinking, I love the marketplace and I love the church. I'm like, I get to 
like do this. We get to be the, the company that brings this all together and serves the church well. And I met with Ross, and, and yes, we wanted to have impact and size, but he's like, look, we're going to be a billion-dollar company. And I was like, okay, I'm 35 years old, or 34 at this time. I'm going, well, I haven't been a part of a billion-dollar company. This is going to be fun, I guess. And I was quickly promoted to our executive team. There's only eight of us on the whole executive team. So we're sitting in tables like this, deciding the fate of church technology. We're literally what to build, what not to build, what to fund, what not to fund. The features you have in your giving technology or your communication platform. Again, you guys are using this stuff or seeing it in your church. We were sitting there figuring it out. And it was a little crazy. So if we go to the next slide, I was so excited. And I was running our background screening division. But four months in, this was me. <laughs> I was like, this is awful. It was a mess, right? And, and to be fair, they had bought, at this time, about 15, 20 companies pretty quick and, and jammed them together, and it was a mess. The quality that I was used to run and protect my ministry, we were not doing that as well. And it was just because of the chaos and the dysfunction. So four months in, that was me. I, I looked tired, I needed coffee, and I was like, what in the world is going on here? I thought this was going to be great, and it was turning into a nightmare. And I was ready to quit. I was ready to tell them, hey, guys, this isn't working for me. And so if we go to the next slide, it was pretty cool. And this is, this is some of what I want to share with you all. I think it's important you have people in your life you can go sit down with and share things, right? Again, C12 for me is a place where I can go and tell them exactly what I just said. This is tough, guys, and I don't know how to navigate it. Well, I went and sat with a friend, and he, he said, look. He said, I know it's tough. He goes, but look, this is your testimony. Like, how you handle this is a part of your story. And, and so it caused me to go to Scripture, and, and two verses really stood out. And I'm sure we've all done this where we're navigating something, and the living word speaks to us, right? Because that's what it does. And so Romans 8, 28, we know that all things will work for the good of those who loved him, those who are called according to his purpose. And I really rallied around that. And then in this dynamic of private equity, because I have people going, man, you're serving the church, but you have private equity, you have Wall Street money behind you. This is weird. How are you going to do it? And so I was resolute that Colossians 3.23 was going to be a little bit of my anthem. Like, I'm not going to do anything for man's benefit. Like, I'm going to hold the line, and whatever I do, I'm going to work unto the Lord, not unto man. And so the, these verses kind of sustained me through. And, and people knew it. The executive team knew that, hey, if we're going to do something here that's not great for the church or whatever, I'm out. I'm not going to be a part of it. And instead, we, we did serve the church really well. We did uh, add a lot of great things to the softwares. And Ministry Brands is a really big company now. Um, but if you go to the next slide, so even though I had the faith, that feedback from a mentor was great, it still felt like this, right? Um, it was hard. And just being transparent, it was harder than anything I had ever gone through. And quickly, though, we were going through a sales process. So what happened when Protect My Ministry got acquired, that same time, the company resold for $500 million. So the whole company was bought by another private equity group for roughly $500 million. Six, seven months later, we're running the company, and then we're now up for sale again. And again, we all have to navigate things as we're owners and we're driving our business. And I remember going, okay, this is getting a little intense. This is hard. We were putting a lot of pressure on people. The work was hard, but now I'm juggling a sales process. And I remember thinking, this is really nuts. I was out with my dad on his birthday. So this is September and my phone's blowing up. And I'm like, man, and I know it's work related. So finally I step out and take the call. And this is like a Friday night, seven o'clock at night. And they're like, Josh, we really need this work. We're meeting with bankers tomorrow. So on a Saturday, right? They're meeting with investment bankers on Saturday. And I'm going, well, look, guys, I'm out to dinner, and that's going to take me a couple hours of work. And there was a little bit of a pause, and they're like, well, you think you can get it to us by, like, midnight? <laughs> and I was like, well, that's when I remember kind of sitting going, man, this is, this is nuts. Um, but for some reason, I just felt, and, and I am a competitive person, our strengths finder, we do at Office Bright, I'm high on competition. I said, all right, I'm going to get it done. So I go get it done. And, you know, fast forward a little bit, literally just a year later, 54 weeks later after the deal happened that I told you about, we did sell the company. So we can go to the, the next slide. So in one year, 
uh, the company was sold for $500 million, and 54 weeks later, we sold the company for $1.4 billion. And it, it was nuts, right? It, it was uh, one of those where you almost, you couldn't even catch your breath because it was a sprint, and then it happens. And you're on a team of eight where you're just going, wow, what just happened? And so it was exciting because we now knew we had a longer term plan. Because again, I still love the church. I still loved what we were doing. The idea made sense. You know, how we can build. If you think of your table, right? We had, we had accounting software. We had background check. We had website. We had communication tools. We had everything in between. And the idea was we would build it into one piece of technology, right? Because churches were logging in here, logging in there. Logging. So I loved it. But it was hard. And so I was like, new chapter, longer runway, more investment, we're going to do this. And so, if we go to the next slide, it's more of the same. <laughs> more of the same. And, uh, and, and I started to struggle. And so thankfully, I, uh, so now at this time I'm 35, 36, and I'm way underqualified for the role, which I think if we're all being transparent, the Lord likes to call us because of our underqualification, and, uh, and, and, and then we lean on him and things happen and, and we get through. And so I'm navigating this and I'm finally like, I need someone to help me. And so I reach out to a mentor, if we can go to the next slide. And I found a great one, um, a very well-known person here, very, very successful, been there, done that. And I said, how do I navigate this? And, and he says, look, he goes, it's all about the abiding relationship. I'm going, okay, what's that? I'm assuming you're talking John 15. I know that, but I've never really unpacked it. And we spent a year unpacking that abiding relationship. And I would encourage all of you, go spend time in John 15 and really unpack the idea of, you know, the vine, right? The Father, we get, we get to see his fruit by being the branch, just by being connected. And for me, what it, what it helped me do is... I was still able to see all the fruit because, again, we were having so much fun building stuff for church and I had great people. But the outcome was off my shoulders at this point because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to connect. I'm going to be obedient. Colossians 3.23 was going to be a common theme in my life. And I was just going to do my part by being obedient. And then it really just, maybe it was just me, but the pressure on the mental side of the outcome went away. And, it, and I was able to manage. I was able to get through. And, um, and so we kept pushing and we kept pushing. And one thing with abiding for me was, and a lot of us as business owners probably struggle with this, I don't know how to sit in neutral. Like, I'm fire, fire, aim. My poor wife, well, I'm glad she's not here. She'd be like, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, we're go-getters, right? We're business drivers. We're trying to get things done. And if, for me, I unpack scripture and I realize that's not what he desires for our relationship. He has built us to get things done. He has wired us in ways to have impact in the workplace and to glorify him in the workplace. But he also wants us to be in a position of neutral and say, Father, what do you have to say? And just stop and then listen and then go, right? There's not, I, I haven't found scripture that says, Lord, if this isn't the path, block it. it. I haven't found that in scripture or shut the door. He actually says, stop, get in neutral and then let's go and let's go together and go when I say go, right? And so that was a big, big moment for me, and it really helped me navigate. So as we kept going, though, again, we sold for $1.4 billion. The company was struggling to live up to that value. So things, just like we know in our Christian walk, it doesn't get easier, right? It doesn't mean because all of a sudden we, you know, we have our faith that life is good and life is easy, right? We struggled a lot. And all of a sudden, we got hit with, hey, Josh, um, need you to cut about $2 million out of your payroll. I'm going, man, I'm already running at 42% profit margins. I'm running as lean as you want. What do you mean? You can't go find $2 million. They're like, hey, man, let us know by Friday. This is where the PE side did get a little tough, just being, being transparent. 42% net profit margins were not enough. And, uh, and so had to navigate that. It was hard. Again, I'm in C12. I'm in with mentors. I'm going, guys. I need your help navigating this. How do I do it? And thankfully, it brought me to the cross instead of had me running away from it because I didn't know how else to navigate, right? And so we're struggling, we're going through, and then one other thing I think is important for this group, and we can go to the next slide. My wife and I, um, and I have my son Braden here, 
my wife and I made it a point to say, okay, enough's enough, we are forcing time away. And I would encourage you all to find a way to do that. No matter what it is, a once a quarter, weekend trips, force time away from your spouse. I, th I think the priorities need to be there. And so we got in the habit of doing a cruise every February. It was kind of a calm kind of year. We'd already started the year. We'd already done budgets the previous year. And there were some cruise deals, actually. So I'm a little bit of a deal shopper. But Royal Caribbean had a ship, Brilliance of the Seas, right? Leaving out of Tampa. I'm like, let's go. And we were hardcore about it. We're like, no one's telling us no. So we book a trip. Hit the next slide. And so it leaves on Thursday. We get back on Monday. And I get a call from Ross on Wednesday. Ross never calls me, right? Uh, and uh, by the way, Ross is like a billionaire now. He's done this multiple times and uh, had a lot of success doing this software and fintech private equity thing. Hey, Josh. Hey, Ross. He's like, so we're going to... We're going to let, so I reported to the CEO, I was EVP, which we ran the businesses, there were three of us, and, the, and there was a small C-suite, and I reported to the CEO, I said, hey, we're going to let the whole C-suite go on Monday, and we're reorganizing the business, can you be in Knoxville? When do I need to be in Knoxville? Monday. I'm like, ooh, uh, can I be there in the afternoon? He's like, why? I'm like, well, I'm about to leave on a cruise, and uh, I'll be back Monday morning in port, I think I can get there by lunch on, on, on Monday. He's like, all right. And he goes, oh, by the way, we're going to reorganize the whole business and we're going to make three divisions and we want you to run our big division, which is about 60% of the company. So this is, we have 40 companies in the mix. This is about 25 of our companies. So I said, okay. Um, I certainly wasn't going to cancel the cruise, just so we know. <laughs> that that would have been a, my wife would have been referencing Colossians 3.23 to me. Um, and we can go to the next slide. And so we're struggling. They're, re they're wiping out the C-suite. I went through three CEOs in six years. It was like a game of Survivor, ultimately. And, and so I'm running our giving platform, which for church giving, we processed about $8 billion a year in gifts. So if you gave online, I probably saw it. Uh, maybe I'll check and report back. Uh, and our background check business was, was doing well and growing. And then we had some text and communication side and so what I did with my wife, and again, this is the little nuggets that I learned that I'm like, hey, I'll share these and, and maybe they resonate. So we agreed to go on the cruise, obviously, but we, we said, hey, let's figure out if we want to do this because it was already chaotic enough for me running a smaller piece of the business. I knew the pressures, the giving business had actually basically fallen over and it was a big mess. So I was literally, people were, other executives on our team were like, hey, it's a dumpster fire. After I accepted it, they're like, I don't know if condolences or congrats are in order, but best of luck. And so on. But what, what we did is we thought we would recap the business in two years and felt, hey, let's make this work. My wife, we were strategic with her staying home and dealing with Braden and my, my daughter, Savannah. And we really, in unity, came together and said, let's do it, right? So the idea of being on the same page with your wife, because I was ready to say if she wasn't on board, I was not going to be on board. And we have to be real and willing to say that in that relationship. I wasn't always good about that. Uh, and so we stacked hands. We were in unity. We, we felt it was the right thing, and we were ready to go. So we get back. I catch a flight the next, that Monday, and I'm in Knoxville after they let go of the whole C-suite. And now we're in a room like this, reorganizing the whole business, so about 1,000 employees. We can go to the next slide. And part of what I remember and this has stuck with me because I like to consider myself a knucklehead that somehow has been given some great favor and opportunities, but when I really think about it, super underqualified, right? And this is a Henry Blackaby quote. I'm a big Experiencing God fan. I, I love going where God's already at work and just being a part of it, and that's a lot of what, what I see at Office Pride and why I joined. But this is my life in a quote. He doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. If we're just willing to be obedient and a heart after him, again, the outcome's his, right? Pressure's off of us. And, and we just need to, we need to do our thing. Be present. I st still doesn't mean sit on your, sit on your keister and, uh, and do nothing, right? He's, he's created us to be who we are, be who we are, and, and embrace it. And so that, that was kind of my rallying cry for the next step. We can go on to the next one. So now I had a bigger team. 
with, with chaos everywhere. Um, these, I had a handful of leaders in Knoxville, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Washington, D.C., Memphis, Spokane, Birmingham. These were all different companies we acquired and left the offices in place, right? So Dallas was Fellowship One, Ann Arbor was Parasoft. If we have any Catholic folks, we own the technology that served more than half of the parishes in the United States, Parasoft. Um, Washington, D.C. had um, a giving company. And, um, and again, it was hard, right? We're not promised, like, just because we have a faith, like, man, things are just going to be easy. And, and I had to really live and rely on that, that belief that he qualifies the called. And I, I leaned on that because it was really the only option I had. <laughs> and so if we go to the next slide, um, I remember, uh, if any of y'all are Oswald Chambers fans, I think it's July 28th, there's uh, a devotion that I think we could all relate to. But I do believe it's a design for our relationship with Christ in the business context especially. But this idea of moment by moment relationship, moment by moment dependence, the idea that the Holy Spirit really does give us an unfair advantage. I'm sure we could all share stories of we prayed for something and we got clarity to do something that actually made no sense, no worldly sense. And then as you look back six, 12 months later, that was the, that was the right plan, that was the right thing that protected us or gave us an opportunity, and it didn't make any sense in our own thinking, but his ways are not our ways, right? His math is not our math. And so I would just encourage you all, every email, every interaction, every meeting, go to him. Father, what do you have to say? How can I do this well? How can I serve this person? How can I basically glorify you and what I'm doing? And I, he's, what I tell my team and I tell my family is God always shows up but so many times he also shows off, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And so we're going and we're grinding, and things are kind of getting better, and we're now in another sales process. I think I've gone through another CEO turn at this time. I did, yeah. So CEO got fired again that I reported to. Um, and if we go to the next slide, I was just like, man, is this worth it? By the way, the two years I told my wife, we're now in year three. We're on year three, partly because of this silly virus that happened to kind of come out and impact things. It slowed things down. And uh, ironically for ministry brands, COVID really helped the business. If you think about it, we were an online giving tool and churches almost overnight had to shift and that business grew by like 60%, that piece. Um, but I go to that same mentor and I'm saying, hey, I don't know if I want to do this. I said, how do I make that decision? And he just asked me a simple question, and I think this is good for all of us as we try to gauge where we're at. He said, well, are you bearing fruit? And I'm pretty worn out. We normally talk at 6.30 in the morning. I don't think the coffee had really hit in yet. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, the fruit of the Spirit, man. He's like, you know, is that kindness, patience, joy, is that there? And I thought about it, and I said, well, not really. I said, I go into the Tampa office, I close my door, and I'm on Zoom calls for eight hours a day, and then I leave. And I was a highly engaged you know, member of the team, and, and I believe in servant leadership. And he's like, well, look, man. He goes, either I would try to find some fruits of the Spirit, or that's your answer. And I was like, huh, OK. And so I made it a point to stop being in my office for eight hours a day on Zoom calls and walking around the floor, being with the team. How's life? How are things going? Really getting back to more of that servant heart that I had that gave me the joy, the peace, all of that, that I believe were the fruits of the Spirit and what I love doing. And so that, again, that was great advice. That was a great check of how things are going in my life. I went into scripture, I said, well, what are the fruits of the Spirit? How am I doing in each of these little areas? And, um, and it gave me a path to focus on that. And that was great advice. And so um, just encourage you all to think of how you're bearing fruit, where you're bearing fruit, what that looks like. But then it was interesting, if we go to the next slide. So about a year before I left, in my quiet time in journaling, which I would, I would say is a great thing, because you, when you journal and you look back, you can see the themes and the repetition of Christ 
working through your life if you're really being transparent in there. And I was finally hearing, it's time for you to go. The season's coming to an end. It's like, well, that's interesting because I could have thought that would have happened 20 times ago by now. But all of a sudden, I'm hearing it, right? And this idea of, Father, what do you have to say and being obedient? And this is like 20, maybe early 2021. And I'm going, okay. And of course, my next question was, well, when? And the answer was not right now, but soon. And I was like, okay, well, so I share that with my wife. We want to make sure we're thinking about this the same way. And, and it became more and more obvious that this was true, whether this deal got done or not. So now we're in a process. We're trying to sell for $2.2 billion at this point. And this was a piece of the business. And there's eight of us on the executive team. And I'm just going, I might be ready to walk away before this gets done, which would be leaving a lot on the table financially. And so we were trying to navigate that. And thankfully, I never had to really press the Colossians 3.23. Romans 8, 28, lived through. I was able to, to experience that. And we kept going. And if you hit the next slide, so this is actually one of our final meetings. This is our executive team. You have an EVP on the left. The guy on the far left in the blue is our chief revenue officer, chief financial officer, head of marketing over here. The guy in the corner there with the Apple Watch is our CEO. Great people. I loved working with these people. So, so it, it was one of those... We're, we're doing our final plan, we're meeting with our bankers, and we know the deal's probably gonna get done. And so I'm sitting back there, and I'm like, I'm gonna take a picture of this, just because I know this is it for me and this team. And so that's what this is. I, I just was like, all right, I did my part, took a little picture, and it's just a reminder of great people, but it was a reminder of, we have chapters and seasons in life that I think we need to be obedient to. And for me, the Lord was telling me, I let you experience all of this, because I'm, just like we, we hear of the trials and tribulations and things to make us better, it was, I'm letting you go through this because I have a plan for you, a future plan for you that's great. And so my encouragement to you all is, no matter what you've gone through, good or bad, lean into that as part of the process. That moment by moment kind of dependence is also meant for the sanctification throughout our walk. The business side of things is full of opportunity. Like we should be strategically um, thinking about the impact we can have through our business, right? Again, that's the whole foundation of C12 and this idea that the marketplace is an opportunity. It's a platform for impact, for kingdom impact, right? And, and I believe that businesses can be super successful with that approach. Um, again, he just takes care of outcomes when we're obedient to him, whatever that might be. And so this is a picture of my team. And then the deal... Ironically, it was supposed to get done December 27th of 2021, and the deal caught a little snag, and that actually almost didn't happen. That would have been tough. That would have, that would have been like, Lord. <laughs> um, but my wife and I were set to, uh, we have a place up, we had a place at that time up in Home Assassin, and we were going fishing on December 30th with a fishing guide, and the deal got delayed, and I remember going, I'm not canceling my fishing trip. <laughs> and I said, hey, look, I'm going to be on a boat. If I need to docky sign anything, let me know. But just the deal got done. It closed December 30th. Um, it was a hard-fought deal. We did not get $2 billion. It was actually $1.7 billion. And so Reverence Capital is now the owner of Minister Brands. But that was my journey through that. And just thankful, right? I was reminded of a few things. One. I spent another amount of time with my mentor talking about we are blessed to be a blessing, right? That covenant relationship and, and just how these, how these business windfalls and transactions can allow blessings to flow through us. But we need to make sure they flow through us, right? It's not meant to stop with us. However, we can continue to bless those around us, our employees, our, our customers, our family members, things like that. That was a big takeaway for me, but um, that was a six-year snapshot of why I now have gray hairs. I was a specimen of a man before I came in. <laughs> and uh, and it, was, it was exhausting, but it was, it was such a time in my life where I think the Lord showed up and showed off so many times. It was a lot of fun. And then the next slide is that, that what's next thing was Office Pride. So I'm here with the team. We got some members of our team. I'm having a blast. 
Um, we are very strong on a faith-based culture. We believe in honoring God. We believe in being bold about our faith in the marketplace. We're going to continue to do that. We're having, we're having a lot of success in the meantime. And just as a reminder, Todd, the founder, wrote this book, Stop Using the B Word. It's very practical in the sense of we live, and we all know what the B Word is, right? Busy. Some of y'all were thinking a different B Word. Um, but those are copies for you. We only had so many. Take it. It's a great read. I, I, I was able to read it in one sitting because I just couldn't put it down. But super practical on the being productive versus busy mindset that we get into. And um, just encourage you to take, take what we have. And thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun.